Hey everyone, Scott here with Forever Armed. Today I'm going to give an after action report on a class I recently took at Tactical Response. This was their two day, 16 hour medical class called Immediate Action Medical. The main objective of this course was to teach you how to deal with life threatening injuries um, to save someone's life before medical staff can get on site to take over. So we're talking about injuries that would kill a person in say 90 seconds to a couple of minutes, okay? So we're talking about things like uh, arterial bleeding, um, an, an obstructed airway, or some sort of a chest compromise like a sucking chest wound or a tension pneumothorax. These are the main three things that can kill someone before medical staff can get on site. So that, that was the objective of this class, was to deal with these three main injuries, traumatic injuries. Um, we went over a thing called the five B's, and the five B's are bad guys. Uh, bleeding, breathing, brain, and body. Uh, the idea is you go through these in, in that order. So the first one being bad guys. Are there bad guys on the scene? Do they need to be dealt with or have they left? You know, you don't want to go in and start treating someone who's injured if the bad guys that did that to them is still on the scene because, you know, you're no good treating them if now you're injured as well. So the bad guys need to be dealt with first, okay? Once you're done with that, you move on to the next thing, which is bleeding. Check the person for bleeding. If they've got some sort of arterial bleeding, you, you know, you may need to be getting out a, a tourniquet, okay, to stop that bleeding right away and get an H bandage on that right away. Um, maybe they've got some sort of a, a chest injury of some sort where they're bleeding. That needs to be dealt with. Maybe they're having, maybe they have an obstructed airway. You know, these are all things that need to be looked at in that order. So you've got the bad guys, the bleeding, and you've got your breathing. For brain, there's really not a whole lot you can do if, if they're if they are if they're not bleeding and they're not and they are breathing and they're just unconscious. It, it's best to just leave them there. You know, call not call nine one one, get medical staff out there right away, and they will deal with that. You don't want to be moving people around if 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 you don't need to. Okay because they may have a brain injury and you don't want to be messing around with that. And then for body, that's pretty much just going over the rest of the body, scanning it, you know, feeling around for any other bleeding that might be there, maybe that maybe broken bones, maybe scratches, things like that. You just want to look for other, other injuries like that. So that, that was the order, and I thought that was really an, an, an interesting thing that I never thought of, so I, I really found that to be very useful. Uh, one thing I liked about this class is we there was a lot of repetition. We put tourniquets on so many times, I mean, to the point where you almost, you know, I don't think anyone was getting it wrong anymore. Everyone was getting them on nice and tight because we did it so many times. Same with H bandages. I mean, by the time the class was over, everyone in the class was getting those H bandages on nice and tight. Um, we went through a lot of different things like that. We, we, we went through... Uh, dealing with obstructed airways, how to, how to check for that, how to roll someone over and position them in a way to open up their airway. We even used uh, um, a, a, nasal, a nasal airway tube that we would, we actually did this to each other, put it down our, our nostrils. It's, a, it's an 8 inch clear rubber tube that goes down into your nostril, out down into your throat to clear your nasal airway if, if that's being blocked. So that was pretty interesting to do that, to do that and have it done as well. Um, what else did we do? We we practiced uh, we practiced uh, working on sucking chest wounds. Here again, this is you. This is your arriving on the site. You you grab whatever you can to 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 cover up a sucking chest wound, which is basically just a chest in the wound. Maybe it's a knife, a stabbing, or maybe it's a, a gunshot wound. You want to you want to cover that up. In the class, we were primarily using plastic with duct tape and just sealing off that hole so that air couldn't get into the chest. Or, or even just duct tape would work. So we did, we did a lot of that in the class. And we also went over using a uh, catheter needle. If you've got uh, uh, tension pneumothorax, uh, putting the catheter, catheter needle in to uh, relieve that air that's in the chest cavity. Uh, we didn't actually ch test that out on each other. We used a, a rack of uh, pig ribs, actually, to, 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 to uh, practice and, and learn how to, where to put the needle and such. So we went through all these things, though, like I said, a lot of repetition to the point where you, you know, people weren't doing it wrong anymore, which is great. Uh, toward the end of the class, um, kind of like a final scenarios thing, we, we, we would go in, um, we'd be told, you know, hey, go in on this scene, there you see an injured person, 
Uh, maybe you had to rip their clothes open, find out what, what's going on with them if they're conscious, ask them where they're, where they're injured and things like that. And then you had to take the proper steps to treat those traumatic injuries. So that was pretty interesting. We went through a, a, a handful of scenarios, each of us uh, doing that. So it's pretty much, you know, all the things you learned in the class now, boom, you toss into a scenario, you have to assess the person and, you know, deal with all the situations and, and use the right equipment gear, medical gear, to uh, treat those traumatic injuries. So it was pretty great. Overall, it was it was a great class. I had pretty much no medical training prior to this class. So um, right now, I feel pretty confident that if you know, if I if my if I was needed to to help someone with a traumatic uh, injury like that, I would I would know what to do. And one thing that in the class that they constantly talked about is any gear will do if you will do. Meaning, you know, you don't have to necessarily have a tourniquet on you at at the time to stop bleeding. You, you could, you know, take a t-shirt, rip it up into strips and just tie that around real tight as a tourniquet. Like I said, any gear will do if you will do. So, you know, a lot of it, a lot of it is, you know, knowledge in your head, not necessarily always the gear itself. So anyways, that's about it. Um, once again, uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, like and share this video. And uh, this is Scott with Forever Armed reminding you uh, to be ready for the moment, even a medical moment. You must train for the moment.